Good morning, and welcome to St. John's, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, or those who do mother duties, and sometimes they're teachers, and sometimes they're aunts, and sometimes they're maybe even uncles, but happy Mother's Day. Um, NAMI will meet this Monday at 5.30. Uh, if you know of anyone who's interested in, in coming, please let them know. Um, <coughs> choir practice is Wednesday for, the, for bells and the praise team and, um, and choir. Geraniums are on sale. Uh, they're only $3.50, which I think is a good deal when I went to buy flowers. Um, and anyway, they're, uh, they're to decorate the sanctuary. Uh, so they're $3.50 three and there is a sheet in the back that you can fill out. Um, Vacation Bible School is at Westminster during the day this year. Um, it's from June 19th to the 23rd. Oh, it's at St. Peter's. Oh, it's at St. Peter's. Yes. Okay. I don't know why I said um, and anyhow, it's, during, it's going to be during the day, and it's June 19th to the 23rd, and it's from 9 to 12 in the morning. Um, in the back, there's also pins for uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, they're $2 uh, if anyone would like to purchase one or two or three, that's fine. Um, are there any other announcements? Sue Ann. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. worship you can grab your muffin um, but those who are going on the mission trip this summer parents and youth I need if you just come back in here um, I need to go over a couple things with you all um, so after worship yes Anyone else? Okay, as you know that this is Mental Health uh, Awareness Month along with Mother's Day, so the, here is some advice for moms. Connect with other moms. You can get and give advice and it's someone that you can talk to. Um, make time for uh, yourself. You can read a book. You can sew a quilt, or go for a walk, or just talk to another mom. Do something you enjoy, and that might even be doing something with your kids. <laughs> Let us prepare for worship. Thank you. 
Peace of God be with you. I invite you to share your sign of God's peace. 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 And now, for those who are able, I invite you to stand and join with us in Cornerstone. Afraid, we are encouraged because God is with us wherever we go. You may be seated, and I invite our young people to come and join with me. You can stand right there at that. Okay, that'll be good. All right, all right, so I'm going to ask you all to go ahead and sit right up here. Okay? Because we're, we're going to be, oops, okay, hold on. We'll move stuff over out. You can move the papers over, Braden. Oops, I got my orange. What did I do with my orange? What did I do with my oranges? Oh, oh. I can't do anything this morning. Just be glad I'm here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Somerset Fruit Stand, please hold. Somerset Fruit Stand, please hold. Somerset Fruit Stand, please hold. No, we don't sell strawberry shortcakes because it's a fruit stand. 
We sell strawberries, no shortcakes. No, we don't sell asparagus because it's a fruit stand. We sell fruit, not veggies. Pizza, are you kidding? We sell fruit. Yes, you want pizza? Call Pizza Hut. <sighs> Somerset Fruit Stand, please hold. Somerset Fruit Stand, please. Oh, forget it. Ha ha, ha having a rough day, huh? It's been nonstop. People have been calling off the hook. We've been slammed since we opened, too. And everyone else called in sick. Wow, that stinks. I told my mom, Chuck E. Cheese is hiring. That's my dream job. But no, <laughs> here I am telling people over and over that they can't get rutabaga, beets, cabbage, asparagus, and yes, even pizza. Because it's a fruit stand. Sounds like you need some peace. No thanks, I don't need any fruit. Fruit? Who said anything about fruit? I don't want any of your orange. I wasn't offering an orange, I was offering peace. I know, I said, I didn't want a piece of the orange. Not that kind of peace, I mean peace, like peace like a river, peace that calms the soul, the peace I try to share with everyone that I meet. It's not your orange? No. The so, peace I'm talking about comes from God. If we have Jesus in our hearts, we can have peace no matter how much the phone rings or how crazy life can be. You're a strange person, but this peace you're talking about, I could go for some of that. You want some orange to go with it? No thanks, Leo. Just wanted to offer. I just wanted to offer. Tell God to send that peace and send it, please, quickly. I will. Okay, so, what do you think this orange has to do with peace? Yeah, I know, huh? Well, first of all, it's round like a peace sign. Well, I mean, like, round peace signs. It's also round like our world. And does our world need a little peace? Yes, yes. So, um, it reminds us, even in our own lives, can your, in your life, can you sometimes maybe use a little bit of peace do things get a little crazy sometimes? Yes. And so as I open up this orange, I'll set it right on there. We're reminded that, you know, peace comes to, as we look at this orange, it's a whole orange. And God's peace comes to us in our own lives. And as we split it apart, it reminds us that God's peace comes to us sometimes in pieces, right? We need peace for this morning's class at school and we need it on the bus on the way home and then we need it at this. Also reminds us that peace is for us to share. How can we share peace with others? Can you think of one way to share peace? How did um, Leo share, how did I share peace Sometimes it's just by offering a little bit of encouragement, you know, to say, hey, you know what, I know things are really kind of out of control right now, they're crazy, right, and things aren't very peaceful, but I can, maybe I can, you can just bring a calming presence to those around you. Maybe when somebody's fighting, you can help in some kind of way, you know. Um, maybe we can say nice things instead of creating not peace, just in our own lives, we can create peace just by being peaceful people and saying nice things and being helpful to people. So, as you eat your oranges this week, do any of you eat oranges? Yeah, so when you eat your orange this week, I want you to think about God's peace. Um, when you eat a piece, like I just did, just think about God's peace in your own life. And then you can think about ways that you can share God's peace with others at school, at home, wherever you are, so we can be peacemakers. And now that I've successfully messed up my hands, <clears throat> I'm on a roll. Um, you guys are going to get the opportunity. Oh, we got fruits. 
So fruit stickers, so you're going to stick them up and we're going to hang them back on the wall because we're going to remind, so we want everybody to know that we are peacemakers, okay? So we have fruit stickers back there. There's, um, I think, um, uh, papers back there that there's peace signs back there so you can make your fruits peer, um, fruity peace signs. So before you go back, let us pray. Dear God, when things seem out of control, when people seem mean, when there is no peace, we pray to you. Fill us with your peace and help us to share your peace with others. Amen. All right. And Lydia, you can carry the oranges. Oh, okay. You're, you can feel free to eat the oranges. Thank you. Thanks. Peacemaker. In case anybody wants a little piece of the orange, it's really good. I now invite those who are able to stand and join with me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God, you call us to service, but we want to, but we are afraid. We feel ill-equipped. We want to try new things, but we fear failure. Lead us in grace. Amen. Jesus calls us to live out our faith. He strengthens us through forgiveness, mercy, and overflowing blessings. With God leading us, we are encouraged. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day, the sun that is shining, bringing the warmth of your love upon our lives, bringing us your peace. For there are times in our lives in which everything seems to be going wrong, or perhaps just things keep building up, one phone call after another, one text, we and each one has something pulling our, us one way and another way, and we feel like we're going in circles or in different directions. We pray for your peace in our lives. As we think about our lives, we think about so much our loved ones who are in need of healing and we lift them up. For those who have cancer and, and are undergoing treatments, we pray for them and their treatments, for their strength, and, and for those around that are giving them care during this time. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, that you will comfort them as they mourn their deaths. We think about Mother's Day, and we celebrate all of our mothers and those who have been mothers to us. And yet we also remember those whose mothers are, have died, and we continue to feel that hole in our hearts. Thank you, God, for being father and mother, for being all to us, our creator, for making us in your image as wonderful people. And we thank, are thankful for the joy of sharing with one another and celebrating all that is life, celebrating our successes and awards and being there to encourage one another in our failures. Thank you for loving us no matter what. As we journey each and every day, we thank you for the joys, and we thank you for being with us in the challenges. For those across the country who once again have gotten struck by tornadoes, as we continue to add places on our list of tornadoes this year. We just pray that you will help those communities to rebuild. For those who need to rebuild their lives in other ways, we lift them up. We thank you for those who are helping in so many ways, for the missions that we do, and we pray that you continue to lead us and guide us as a church 
to be the church you are calling us to be. Thank you, Jesus, for being our shepherd and for leading us to steal waters. We pray now as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, I successfully left my stick with the PowerPoint at home. That's how the morning started. And I knew I was going to do that because on Friday when I finished it, instead of putting it where it should, I put it on, my, on the coffee table. And obviously something got put on top of that. And obviously, usually I said, no, Saturday I'll be doing something with that. But Saturday I didn't do anything with that, which was good, but yet it was bad. <laughs> I know. So today, as we talk about fear, fear of failure, you know, I think sometimes I have learned not to fear failure because I have been successful at sometimes failing. <laughs> and perhaps we all do that. So you will have no pictures. They're nicely at, my, at our house. So just pretend they're up there. It's a lesson in imagination. Yeah. So, um, Zig Ziglar said, failure is a detour, not a dead-end street. There are times, whether we want to admit it or not, um, that we choose perhaps not to do something because of failure. Or perhaps we choose to do something because we don't want to fail. Um, but even in our failures, there is good news that we are in good company. One of the pillars of our faith, Moses, was either afraid he would fail or just plain afraid. You can decide that for yourself. So I'm going to actually read our first scripture. I did put our last scripture up, so you will get to join on that. So the first scripture is Exodus 3, 9 through 12. I have indeed heard the cry of my people, and I see how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now I am sending you... Moses to the king of Egypt so that you can lead my people out of the country. But Moses said to God, I am a nobody. How can I go to the king and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you and when you bring the people out of Egypt you will worship me on this very mountain. That will be proof that I have sent you. 
So God, oops, see I am clicking, and I'm just going to set that up there. <laughs> Stop. Okay, I'm all good now. So God heard the people's cries when they were enslaved in Egypt. And so God had a plan. Moses, you see, was raised in the house of the Pharaoh. He had all the insider knowledge. Moses was also Jewish, right? And um, because, um, so as he was a Jewish, but being raised in the Pharaoh's court, he then saw a fellow Jewish man being beaten by an Egyptian um, overseer. And so Moses got angry and he killed that man. And so the Pharaoh, of course, was going to kill Moses. So he fled to a different land. He married. He was a shepherd out in the fields. He had all of the qualifications to be the one to lead God's people out of slavery, out of Egypt. And what did Moses say? I am a nobody. Have you ever felt like a nobody? I can't run for student government because I am a nobody. I can't stand up against this leader, even though the leader's making bad decisions for the business, organization, or group, because I am a nobody. But you see, Moses wasn't a nobody. He was a survivor of male infants who were being killed. His mother took him and placed him in that basket and saved his life. He was a child of God. We are children of God, so therefore we are not nobodies. We are somebodies. God wasn't going to take no for an answer. And Moses wasn't going to say yes. See the conflict here? When we are afraid of failure, what excuses do we make? Do we come up with? So in Exodus 4.1, Moses, then Moses answered the Lord, saying, But suppose the Israelites do not believe me, and they won't listen to what I have to say. What shall I do if they say that you didn't appear to me? Afraid. Fear of failure. What if we don't know all the answers? And if I don't have all the answers, then... I will fail. What if people won't listen to me? I mean, have you ever tried to tell somebody something and no matter how you tried to tell them, they just didn't get it? It was like the peppermint patty and, and Charlie Brown talking, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Well, Moses decided that was not going to happen to him. He said to God, I can't do it. The stakes for failure are too high. God was going to send Moses to Egypt, and for each of Moses' excuses, God had an answer. Moses didn't like God's answers. I'm thinking, Moses, how in the world can you say no to God? And then I have to realize that sometimes we say no to God. Sometimes we don't even realize we're saying no to God. Moses, though, not only realized it, but he was adamant about it. I'm going to continue with Exodus 4, 10 through 13. Moses said, no, Lord, don't send me. I have never been a good speaker, and I haven't become one since you began to speak to me. I am a poor speaker, slow and hesitant. And the Lord said to, said to him, who gives mankind their mouths? It is I, the Lord. Now go. And I will help you speak, and I will tell you what to say. But Moses said, no, Lord, please send somebody else. Please, Lord. Moses said, no, God. How in the world can I speak to Pharaoh when I stutter? I will fail. Send somebody else. And God said, I will make a way. And tell you what, I'm going to send your brother Aaron with you. He's a good speaker. He can speak. And Moses went. He led the Israelites out of slavery. And he spent the rest of his life wandering with the Israelites through the wilderness, leading them all the way to the edge 
of the promised land. How many times do we say no to something that we think we're not good at or that we think we might fail at? Pastor Adam Hamilton shared that in high school he was dating a nice girl who later became his wife, and they went to school dances. I don't know if any of you have gone to school dances. I never really did, but he said that they would dance the slow dances because all you had to do is go, you know, It was pretty easy, so he could handle that. So they danced the slow dances, and then when the fast dances came on, he went and told his then-girlfriend, no, we're going to go sit down, because he, he knew um, that he said, if I, I was thinking to myself, I can't fast dance because I'm going to look like an idiot, and I'm going to look like a fool. I'm going to embarrass myself out there on the dance floor. So they would sit down for the fast dances. They got married, and for the next 30 years, they sat down for fast dances because he was not going to fast dance. And finally, his wife said to me, she said, you know what, Adam, um, before I die, I would like to go to a dance with you and actually dance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take dance lessons. You can come with me or not. He decided to go with her to take dance lessons. And while they were taking um, dance lessons, um, he said it was, it was going, you know, okay. He said, but first of all, please know that he said, I can't even clap to the beat. So um, he said, I was, you know, trying to get the dance steps right, and I wasn't quite getting them right. And my wife said, you're not counting the steps right. You're not doing it right. And he said, you know, I finally told her, I'm doing the best I can do, so take what you got. He said, now we, are, we go to dances. I dance the fast dances with my wife. I probably still look foolish, but now I'm 52 years old, and I really don't care. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. How true it is, if we don't take any shots on goal, we won't miss any. However, we also won't score. There are times when we miss out on the dances. We miss out on so much in our lives because we're afraid of failure. Winston Churchill said, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Yeah, that's pretty tough, I'm sorry. You know, gee, I failed. Woo, let me go try again. Yeah. But it is a good it does remind us that it even though it's hard that we when we fail, we need to keep on trying. Sometimes we become like Moses and we're ready to pull out our big long list of excuses of why we can't do something. So many things that are good and important in our lives require risks. Risking failure humiliation, embarrassment, or even pain. So this month, as we're learning about mental health conditions, I'd like to mention, I'm going to try to say it right, atichophobia. Atichophobia is an extreme fear of failure. Um, and it affects a person's ability to function in daily life. The person may avoid or postpone tasks because they're afraid of not achieving them. And it is a specific phobia. It's a type of anxiety of disorder. So as we think about people with mental health, you may know of somebody that, that has atichophobia, or maybe it will help us to understand them a little better. So how do we become unafraid of failure? Maybe the first step is to overcoming a fear of failure is recognizing that we're all going to fail at some point in our lives. Um, and that sometimes we're going to make wrong decisions. Sometimes people will laugh at us and say bad things about us. Sometimes we're going to fall right on our face. And sometimes the failures were hurt. But God is with us. And others are here to support us. There are times when our fear of failure leads us to flee or to quit, to make excuses, or to be like Moses and just plan out say, nope, not going to happen. Understanding the experiences that we have had in life with failures can sometimes help us to overcome them. Moses said he was slow to speak. He was 
hesitant. I have to admit, sometimes I'm slow to speak. There are times, especially I might add, my brother-in-law would say, just spit it out, why don't you? I'm trying. Some versions of the Bible say that Moses stuttered. And yet God said, I'll send you a bro your brother to help you. God sends people to help us. Today is Mother's Day, and we think about those who have been mothers or motherly people for us. They've encouraged us when we are afraid to do something. Barbara was born with a cleft palate, and that impaired her speech dramatically. She was made fun of a lot in her life, but her mother encouraged her to keep on, to speak for herself, no matter what people thought. And she, she made her to speak to others instead of speaking for her. But because of her mother's encouragement, she was able to pursue her dream of dance. She now owns a dance studio for children and is so thankful for her mother's encouragement. Sometimes mothers have fear of failures. You know, am I making the right decision for my kids? And yet they persist through those failures because they love us. Cindy Noel Martinez from New Jersey City, New Jersey, shared a story that she has a four-year-old son named Nathan, and he was born with Down syndrome. And so she, she taught at a preschool, um, and so she was, Nathan was at the preschool with her, and he seemed to be learning um, all of the typical preschooler things. And she was a really proud mother. However, Nathan couldn't verbally express himself. And it caused him to show little interest then, of course, in playing with other children. And so he met with a speech therapist, but he got really frustrated and angry with that and just shut down and wouldn't participate. So Cindy decided she had to find a way for her son to communicate. She resigned as preschool teacher and decided to homeschool him. Well, he was only interested in, in learning stuff if she sang to him. She felt like she was failing. So Cindy shared, so I did what any other woman of faith would do. I prayed. I prayed with tears. I closed my eyes and I asked God, how can I help my son speak? And she said, and in my, in my thoughts, I heard God saying, teach him sign language. So she said, this huge sense of peace came over me. And I knew that in my heart that American Sign Language would be a great way to help my son. So she went online and she found this sign language video of a woman who was singing. And so Nathan sat there and watched the whole video and he, she was teaching sign language while she was singing and Nathan was learning. But what he signed then was this word, the word for more. But he didn't learn that from the video. When he was a year old, he was, had, a, he was, um, had a developmental therapist and the developmental therapist had taught him the word more. He wanted more of those singing, signing videos so that he could learn more sign language. And through those videos, Nathan learned to sign and communicate. Moses had difficulty speaking, and yet God still called him to be a leader. God encouraged him, was with him, Today, we can be unafraid of failure because God is with us. God um, provides us with women and mothers and people who nourish, nurture us and encourage us. And when we fail, we thank God for those people. We thank God for the moms and nurturers who have offered us comfort, who have showed us that they care and that we can really rely on them. We thank God for mothers and nurturers who taught us to be persistent and to keep on trying and to push through our frustrations and challenges and not to fear failing. In the Forbes magazine, Kimberly Whitler wrote an article, Why Parents Need to Help Their Children Fail. Hmm. In the article, she shared that if a parent perceives failure as an opportunity for growth, their child will see, see failure as an opportunity for growth. If a parent perceives failure as this negative hindrance to success, then that's what their child will also see um, failure as. 
We are thankful for the mothers in our lives who have been with us and encouraged us when we experience failure in our lives. Moses brought the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and yet wandered around in the wilderness with those people for 40 years. I wonder how many times in that 40 years did Moses feel like he was a failure. I think I might have felt it once or twice in those 40 years. Yet God was with him on the journey. And as he came to lead the people into the promised land, it would not be him. It was going to be Joshua. And we're going to read now the words that God said to Joshua. There we go. Let us read them. Whoops. Hold on. Oops. I, <clears throat> I failed again. <laughs> There are two slides, and I deleted one. I'm going to read you what, jo- what God said to Joshua. <laughs> As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So think of the things that you are facing in your lives that you are afraid of, perhaps afraid of failing. We lean on our faith. Our God mothers and nurtures us and encourages us to be strong and courageous. We can be unafraid because God is with us wherever we go. Amen.
I invite you to stand now and join us in our prayer of dedication for all of our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Jesus, we hear your call upon our lives. We respond by offering our tithes and offerings. May you bless them to be used in our ministries as we strive to share the good news of your presence and love. Amen. walking into the world, equipped by God and strengthened by God's love, the love of Jesus Christ who continues to encourage us in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. 